Hey there, I'm Steven with Six Stringers Inc. I'm the founder and the creator of Fret Maestro and Wild Plectrums. Today what we're going to do is look at the traditional way of leveling and profiling and dressing frets. The traditional way means you have to straighten the neck. So you need this straight guy here. It's always a pretty good idea to use a flashlight. See if you get any daylight under there. And you have to understand that any daylight at all is a lot when it comes to a fret. If your fret, say, is 54 thousandths. Now, a sixteenth of an inch is 62 and a half thousandths. So 54 thousandths is quite a bit shorter. And so if you have an 8 thousandths, 7 thousandths daylight, which is very thin, that's going to that's going to add up to a lot of fret material. The other thing it does is, if there's any daylight under there, let's use this as a sanding beam. And this would definitely work as a sanding beam. Flat, straight, durable. Put that on the frets. You see how it rocks? That's because the frets aren't flat. No, frets are, they have a radius that goes like this that follows the radius of the fretboard. And then they have a crown that goes like that. Okay, so they're a compound radius. So when this guy's like this, you know, and you're coming across the top back and forth, uh, you're basically bulldozing <laughs> the crowns or the hills, the tops of the hills off the fret radius. And uh, that's gonna consume a lot of material. I'm going to diagram this for you at, in, along the way of this video. I'm going to have a lot of diagrams so that you can see close up in detail what's actually happening to your frets using a sanding beam and then following that up because now these are all flat with a straight file. Now this isn't actually a fret file. I don't, I don't actually want to use a fret file that you buy everywhere and I definitely don't want to use a sanding beam no matter who makes it and I'm going to explain to you why that is um, the other tool we use of course is a fret rocker I know that I have a high fret here you can see it rock there it doesn't you know and, and but even if it's only one or two frets, you still have to make this neck perfectly, perfectly, perfectly flat. If not, if, if it bows this way, you're going to knock these guys, these frets here, lower than these frets in the center. In which case, these will be higher and you're, gonna, you're still going to have fret buzz. I mean, it has to be perfectly flat. That takes several days, adjusting the truss rod, letting the neck wood settle in, adjusting the truss rod, letting the neck wood settle in, little by little, till it's absolutely, perfectly flat. And if you don't do that, you're going to have a lot of problems. You're going to ruin those frets. Okay, now we're going to bring in uh, some diagrams. Our first diagram is the in-view cutaway of a guitar neck, including the fretboard and the fret. In this example, we're showing a 54 thousandths inch tall fret. We need to know basically, we need to know how tall the fret is so we can do the math. Now, when we're thinking about doing a fret leveling job, we're told that we get these tools. And collectively, we have a fret rocker, a neck ruler, a sanding beam, a fret file. Now there's actually gonna be two or three fret files a fret rocker, you know, immediate, medium priced, you know, say $15, the ruler is about $30, the sanding beam $60, even more, some of them are like $129, because uh, they have to be really straight, you know, they, they can't have uh, any warps in them. Uh, the cheaper ones I, I wouldn't advise. The file, $60 bucks, uh, for a file like this. Uh, this is not a diamond file. This is a serrated file. And uh, anyways, when I look at these tools, I think of a fret having a radius and a crown, so it's a compound radius. It's like a square peg in a round hole. It just doesn't make any sense. Flat, straight, 
frack tools make no sense. Not to me anyways. So we get down to the actual fret work once we've straightened the neck and we've identified high frets. And we're down to uh, the sanding beam and the file. Now the sanding beam, uh, pretty archaic. I mean, it requires one, a lot of practice and skill to be able to use it. And it's incredibly destructive to the frets. Let's see why that is. Here we're looking at the sanding beam diagram sitting on top of a radius fret. The bottom of the sanding beam being flat, the fret not being flat. And we have a notation here called the loss gap of 21 thousandths of an inch. And I'll tell you right now, that's a real number. This is a seven and a quarter inch radius fret. And that is a 180 degree flat sanding beam. And so if you set it down the center, you're gonna get this gap. And that gap I call the loss gap. And that gap, with an AutoCAD program drawn out, measures at 21 thousandths of an inch. That's a lot of fret when you realize that your fret is only 54 thousandths of an inch. We plow along with the sanding beam, or bulldoze as I like to call it. And we see in this diagram, on the left hand, upper left hand side, we see this is what the crown looks like before the sanding beam came in. On the right of that, we see what happens to that crown. It's like shaving off the top of a hill, bulldozing it off. Below that, we see the fret length radius and what happens there. It's got a very flat top and you've got some angular sides. Now, you may have some more steps in there, but it all comes out to be the same thing. You have wiped out a lot of fret material. A closer look at the end view, we see that uh, we have 33 thousandths of an inch left because we lost 21 thousandths in that lost gap. So we have now a 33 thousandths tall fret and we haven't reshaped the radius and we haven't recrowned it. So now we're going to go and we're going to use this file. It's a straight file for making a radius. And here's the thing about these files. No matter how skilled the handiwork is, it is impossible to achieve symmetry across 20 frets. That means each and every fret is an exact clone of each other, which is what you need to get really awesome guitar setup. If those frets are going here and there, your setup isn't going to be awesome. It's basically a waste of money. Okay, Without consistent symmetry, the guitar setup can never be optimized. And I think most guitar players probably know this. Now here we're going to look at how we're going to divide that, that fret length radius using a straight file. Basically you're not going to be, do, be able to do better than a 10 degree angle. And so you can see the magenta lines in there. And these are going to be the angles to kind of fake a symmetry radius. It's not going to be symmetrical. It's, that's not possible with a straight file. So this would be the best you can do. And that's assuming you have practiced skills. You've done this more than once, twice, and three. You've, you've done this many times. So here again, we're looking at what do I mean by 10 degrees. Um, the top image, we see the flat beam result, a flat top. Now we have a file, and this is to scale, okay? We see the file there and we have a magenta line that says guitar body. So you can only bring, when you, when you get to the upper side of the frets, you know, you're, you're at the guitar body there. Uh, that file is, uh, is going to be very close to that guitar body and you may not actually be able to get the far ends of those frets in some guitars. Uh, and doing so, yeah, you know, you got to be careful you don't use the file on the uh, guitar body on the soundboard. That would be uh, kind of ugly. Uh, and then the lowest uh, diagram shows uh, magenta and gray. And those are the segments, the 10 degree segments that you're gonna wind up with using a straight file. And, and here again, 
that's assuming you're really good at this. So, conservatively speaking, straight filing devours at least another 6,000 of fret. Which is then going to leave us with what? We started off with a 54,000th inch fret. We used a destructive sanding beam. We used ba basically a destructive straight file. And uh, when it's all said and done, we have a 27,000th inch fret. Which, if you look at the math, you realize you're not going to be able to do it again. You can do it once on a set of frets. And after that, you have to replace those frets for $600. Is a guitar worth that much? What we're looking at here are the prices of sanding beams and files. And that's not counting the straight edges and the rockers. You need those pretty much anyway, so we won't count those. So we look at a flat straight sanding beam, roughly $70. Uh, you can pay a lot more. You can pay a lot less and get a worse beam you have a straight serrated file that's an actual price that's what they're going for and that is a serrated file not a diamond file and here we have a straight crown file which is a diamond file also 59 let's call it 60 dollars these are based on your mid price market we have a total of 189 dollars and 97 cents these are not the overpriced name brands those cost a lot more nor are they the low price junk. So we just ran through a bunch of diagrams that really illustrated the issues using flat straight tools on radius compound radius frets. Flat straight tools were not designed for frets. They were adapted. There's a big difference between an adaptation of a tool and a tool that is specifically made for the job. This tool right here is called Fret Maestro. Specifically made for the job. That's all it's for. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the features and why this is true. If we look at this right here, we see that there's a radius. This particular Fret Maestro is a 12 inch radius. Okay. There are 11 Fret Maestros. 11 different radiuses for all the different radiuses of the different guitars out there. Okay, mostly what we're looking at seven and a quarter inch, nine and a half inch, those are both Fender guitars. Uh, 12 inch, your, your Gibsons and your uh, GNL guitars and other guitars. Your 16 inch is most of your acoustic guitars. Okay, and then we have eight and a half, 11 and a half. Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 20, so 11. You need to match the fret maestro to the radius of your fretboard, okay? Now inside of the fret maestro is a diamond file. I'm going to pop that out here. I got a little pin I put through a slot. Pop out the diamond file. And you'll see that it also has the radius. Not only does it have the radius, but it also has the crown. Okay, so it will do the radius and the crown at the same time. But to control the depth of the cut is where this comes in. Show you how we know how to use that. This is a Maestro fret gauge. It tells you the height. It's kind of like a little rocker, you know, has each one of these notches here, and then they're each numbered 0 through 11. And you put it over a fret, and you see if it rocks. If it rocks, and the fret's higher than the number. If, it's, if it doesn't rock, uh, then it could be lower, or it might be right there where it needs to be. So you do a couple of them, you kind of dial it in, say, okay. And you're looking for your lowest fret, not your highest fret, the lowest fret. That's what you're looking for. And so let's say, for example, that your lowest fret is number four. Then you set these dials both to number four. And um, to read these numbers, I need glasses. 
So I'll go number four and number four. All right, and that will be the depth matching the readout of the gauge. And that's where I'm going to start with is number four. I may have to go to number five if there's like a deep divot, you know, in the fret. But I'm going to start with number four and walk it in from there. Okay, so this gives me the perfect starting position. After that, I can walk it in. Um, give you an idea of how this works. I'll set it on zero. And at zero, we see that the file is retracted or recessed into the maestro body. Now, that's for your 57 thousandth inch fret height. Okay, the tallest frets you're ever going to see are like 61 thousandths, and they're kind of rare. Okay, and if you're going to do a fret leveling on a 61 thousandth fret, you're pretty much getting down to 57 thousandths. Um, so that's what that's for but your shortest fret that's usable is 24 thousandths and fret maestro at setting number 11 is 24 thousandths okay and when you hit it at 24 thousandths what you're going to see is that now the file is fully extended but not so extended that it's going to cause a problem the problem I'm speaking of is we don't want the file to file the wood. We don't want any file metal touching this wood. Yeah, we're going to have tape on here, okay? But, you know, we still don't want that. So this edge right here, which is a little, always a little going to be a little taller than the position of that file, so that, that metal doesn't touch the wood. And that edge also tells Fret Maestro when to stop filing because it's going to bottom out the file to this edge and it won't be able to cut any deeper than the settings that you put it to. Okay? High precision. Again, I'm going to make very clear each increment is three thousandths of an inch. Three thousandths of an inch. Really high precision. It doesn't mean you're always going to take off three thousandths of an inch. If you have a 59 thousandth fret and you set this to uh, zero, you're going to wind up with a 57 thousandth fret. That means you only took off two thousandths. If the fret was 58 thousandths, you only took off a thousandth. And maybe on a brand new guitar, that's all you need to take off to make each of these into perfect clones of each other. Because when you make your frets perfect clones, that is the really only way to get a truly awesome guitar setup. If the frets are here and there and everywhere, there's no way to get a, a good setup, okay? So let's look a little further at what we have here. So you go, okay, that sounds great. How much does it cost? Okay. The Fret Maestro Basic comes with one file. It's 150 grit diamond, okay? And these are occluded diamonds. I don't know if you know what that means. Uh, they're not glued in, okay? These are plated in, okay? Of course, the file follows the fretboard radius. And uh, it's gonna make very short work of these frets at 150 grit. If you had to do every single fret, which you would have to do if you have divots in any fret, then you have to do them all because they all have to be the same height. That's an hour or so. If you're just doing um, a new guitar, for example, and you just want to make sure that they're all exactly clones of each other, 10, 15 minutes. If you're doing one or two frets because, you know, they're high, you get one or two that you found out with a fret rocker that are high, you know, it's a few minutes each. And again, you know, because you have the radius of the fret and the crown of the fret, you're not creating any flat spots. And you have depth of cut control. All right, see how that popped in there? 
so you're not wasting any fret material when you're using a flat sanding beam you don't know how much you're taking off but you're taking off a lot we showed you in the diagrams that you're pretty much going to be taking off at least 21 thousandths just because of the nature of the beast okay again you're using a, a, a an adaptation tool not a tool that's specifically designed engineered and made for the job okay only fret maestro does that now there are two other files these are optional okay there's a 300 grit to help smooth it off and clean it up faster than say using steel wool or sanding paper it's not a must-have but it's really nice to have I would want it and then there's the crown narrowing file also an insert these are all inserts so there's quite a few people who like a narrow crown on the top and that's what this guy's for but not everybody likes that so not everybody needs that okay must have optional 300 optional 240 grit crown speaking of crown files however we have another crowning file this is a dual crown file and you know, side a which is deep and wide for tall and wide frets side b okay that's for your shallow and, and narrow for your short and narrow frets um, using this i actually uh, like to use both i'll do one one side flip it over to the other side and ding ding ding, ding i'm shaping uh my crown uh, this has a different angle of cut than this crowning file here this crowning file here has an advanced geometry so you really only need the one the advantage of this of course is that you don't have to swap out files because a lot of times when i'm working i'll be knocking the fret down and you know getting my radius and my round crown and uh, then i'll want to use this to narrow the crown and then i'll come back with the fret maestro and finish it off to get the a get the corners off right and so i can interchange without swapping the, the insert file the cartridge file whatever you want to call it whereas here i mostly i'm going to find that i'm swapping them out which is really easy uh or you know i mean i could hand use this but yeah yeah i i, I probably wouldn't i mean you could but i, I don't think i would uh, and that's what this is for if, if you really want to have you know two sets um that's eighty dollars eighty dollars i think you can see why one it's two files in one and, and two it has really nice scales just like on a, on a really nice knife you know um these are metal dowels they're pressed in there's no glue here okay this is this is precision fit and finish okay all right i mentioned that there are different fret maestro radiuses for example you know here's a couple of other ones um this one's a 16 uh this is a nine and a half the one we we're looking at was a 12. i want to emphasize that if you have a 16 inch radius you need a 16 inch fret maestro okay it was 12 inches and 12 inches okay be very clear on that and the same goes for uh, the double crown when you're using fret maestro you don't have to straighten the neck because you are doing one fret at a time and in the diagram videos uh, we talked about how it takes like three days and it does to flatten that neck perfectly if you're going to use a sanding beam and it takes another few days to get it back right after you restring it and the job's done uh, you don't have to do that you don't have to do that no because you're doing one fret at a time so if i'm here and there's a bow that bow is not going to really have any influence on that one fret okay I'm not going to have any influence on that at all and that's why you don't have to straighten the neck uh what else can, oh eating up material now i 
I kind of said it, but not directly, because it's three thousandths of an inch increments. You were going to get many leveling jobs using Fret Maestro, not just one. When you're using sanding beam and straight files, you're only going to get one fret level, and then you're into six hundred dollars to replace those frets. You're going to get many fret levels with Fret Maestro, so you have many years, years, years down the road before you have to replace the frets. And you have to realize, you know, that's a big savings. That's a huge, huge savings. And if the guitar isn't worth the $600 that it costs to replace frets, what's going to happen to that guitar? It's going to become a closet money. Then you're going to have to go out and buy a new guitar and spend that money anyways, right? Fret Maestro, the right way to level, radius, and crown frets. With precision, you cannot match, okay? No skill, no experience necessary. It is foolproof. Anybody can do it. Anybody. It won't let you do it wrong by design, okay? There's no learning curve. A few minutes, watch the tutorial on some of the key points we'll show you. You know, a few minutes. No learning curve. Anybody can do it. $130? $30 for the 300 grit, $30 for the crown narrow, $80 for the dual crown. Uh, this is included with a fret maestro. Fret maestro by six stringers, sixstringers.com. So what we realize is that we have a choice. We can spend $189.97 or a lot more or a little bit less depending on the quality of the tools and go the old school flat straight way to try to deal with our compound radius frets. And by doing so, of course, we're just going to get one leveling job. So we're going to be a lot sooner to have to pay 600 bucks for fret replacements. Or we can go with Fret Maestro. And the base kit is $130, which will do the entire job for you. And you'll get many fret levels out of that. It'll be a long time before you're gonna to have to replace those frets. Which one makes more sense? Which one's a tool that's actually designed, engineered, and made for the job? The answer to that is Fret Maestro by Six Stringers, sixstringers.com.